Okay, so today, we're gonna start talking about layers. Yes, much like onions, cakes, and even ogres, Roll20 also has layers. There's actually four of them uh, that you should get pretty familiar with, uh, depending on which version of Roll20 you have. So if you have a freebie version of Roll20, you will actually only see three, because you wanna have access to dynamic lighting. If you are looking to have a good map, then I would suggest you get the upgraded uh, version, which I believe is uh, 4 dollars but don't quote me on that, uh, because you do get access to dynamic lighting and a couple of other features, which are really, really useful if you're getting serious about making maps in Roll20. So, the four layers, as I've conveniently displayed here, highlighting with the tool, are the map and background layer, the objects and tokens layer, the GM, uh, GM Info Overlay Layer and the Dynamic Lighting Layer. What do these layers do, I might hear you ask? Well, conveniently, they're pretty straightforward and should do exactly what they say on these convenient tooltip labels you'll find in the menu. The map and Background Layer is literally just for that. It's where you're going to be doing a lot of your, um, your work for areas that you do not really want to interact with once you've set them up. Uh, i.e. they are there for your background, they're not there for your things that you're going to be interacting with such as doors or NPCs or players or anything like that. Objects and tokens is quite simply for that, objects and tokens. It's the areas where you put in things like your doors, things you want to move around, such as your players, your monsters, um, light sources, things like that. The GM, uh, the GM Info, and for some reason I can't say that properly, the GM Info Overlay is uh, for quite simply that. It's an area that you as the GM get to see that the players do not. So that is the area that you're going to want to put things like your, your notes on what traps are going to come, your XP, how many creatures are around the areas, what kind of saves they're going to have to make to avoid that definitely well-placed poison trap that you can only see because you conveniently hidden it on the GM layer, you sneaky devil you. The dynamic lighting layer is quite simply that it is an area for adding lighting effects that makes your map slightly more dynamic in that it will reveal and show areas that show exactly what they're looking at uh, when they get into that area on a, well, one might say dynamic basis. Um, and therefore, we come to the end of today's brief, uh, very rapid and highly informative introduction on layers. So take it easy guys, and as always, if it's easy, take it twice. Your eyes struggle against the thick darkness as you enter the chamber. The stench of blood assaults your nostrils and you feel a sickening dampness in the air. This is a place of unknowable horror, but you can't turn back now. As you slowly and cautiously make your way across the room, you see four idols made of gems and precious metals, the only objects in the entire dungeon to have escaped the corrosion of age and decay. They are disturbingly lifelike in their detail, depictions of the old gods whose backs had turned against the mortal races long before history even began. Their names echo in your mind even as you try to shut them out. Twitter. Twitch, like, and subscribe. What do you do?